Hello and welcome once again. I'm your host and the mindset coach Daud Waid, and we are doing the review of the Candle Green book. Oh, you obviously know from a background there is nothing but shades of green. So let's jump you into it. The second audio blog that you've got. We finished the first one from A onwards. Today I'm going to take you a different land, and we immediately start with a review of the theme that is around the world theme D pyramid. I mean, in wonders of the world, we've taken to Machu Picchu and we've taken to China, and today we take to one of the most common, most often spoken about wonder, an area that is intriguing, that is mysterious, that is huge, that is amazing, and that are the lands of the pharaohs, the land of Egypt. Egypt is supposed to be called the cradle of human civilization. Well, if ever we had this entire Darwin theory or all the concept of first man. Egypt claims to be one among the country where they think the man origin was from. So you can use a lot of creative thinking tag, which is a skill that I use in this wonder of the world. And also, number two, because of the Colosseum structures of the pyramid, we used our SDG goals number eleven, that is into sustainable cities, and twelve, responsible consumption. The entire chapter is devoted to what the Egyptian beliefs are, including the god, sun god Ra, and you can play and talk about the entire thing. The content is for you. And when I do that, I also speak a lot about sun. You can speak about SDG goal seven, where they say what makes people look upon the sun as a huge ball of fire. In fact, I did a blog, and you can always read those on the websites or on the Facebook page that we've got here. But idea is you build up an entire conversation around this beautiful work of Egypt. Pyramids are as massive a structure they are. They are enormously amazing to make. Actually, they are in a desert where the temperature could rise up to 45, 50 degrees Celsius, and inside the pyramid, 20 degree. It's it's actually looking like an igloo than a pyramid. Well, here is your first activity I just gave you. Find out 10 differences between an igloo and a pyramid, and I give you one. First one is a dome shape. The second one, the pyramid, is more like a prism shape. Don't accept triangle and rounds. Now you're pushing them to better geometric shape, but that's a great activity to do. The difference between an igloo and a pyramid. Well, pyramid were actually surprisingly one of the tallest structures in the world for more than three and a half thousand years. Now it is very strange with all the Sears towers, the Burj Khalifas, and huge statues that we look at, including our own in, in Ahmedabad, Sardar Vallabhai Patel, or the statue of Jesus, the Redeemer in Sao Paulo, Brazil. So we are looking at a different kind of a conversation that how did the pyramids become so amazing? So there are little pyramid facts. One of them, of course, you can ask your children to do is make a model pyramid. Now, if you're taking an online session like most of the year we had, we encourage them to use anything. And one student actually made this. If you look at it, a model pyramid. I said the only the cap is missing, but there's a good box that you gave me. Anything you can use and put a hands on. Speak about who the pharaohs were, a generation, a dynasty. They were proud of themselves. Look at the story of Moses, which is very biblical story in nature. The Exodus I keep talking about is one of my favorite story around it. How did they build up the great pyramid of Giza? Who's to take a man? Who's Cleopatra? You can pick up some of the names. The text is contented there for you to make up around it. Your activity number two, or in the book, it will be the first one, is go decode what is inside the pyramid. Along with the Bermuda Triangle and the UFO, which is another wonderful activity you can took up, pyramids are a very mysterious source. So, what would you find inside? Go around. Would you find breathing dragons? No, it's not China, but definitely you'll find what a mummy is. A mummified body is actually a dead body of a king who is embalmed, and that is why you find the body preserved. What kind of you know what kind of things they would use? Chemicals they would use to preserve a body. What's the taxonomy? What's the museum's preservation system called? And by the way, one FYI, they also used to have a lot of slaves, a lot of things, gold jewelry, and cats also preserved inside the pyramid. Well, a very interesting way of talking about is to decode the current script. Egyptian script is called the hieroglyphics, and hieroglyphics is a very formal, very wonderful way of writing. Why not ask the students to use hieroglyphics? And first of all, let's say write your own name. So there is a there is a hawk for an A, there is a hand for a B, there is a leg for another B, and you can use a lot of examples like that. Number two, you can ask them to write pyramid word, or you can ask one group to 
draw something and the other group to quickly decode it. The time is five seconds, 10 seconds, the fun in doing it, or you can give a word and who can make out the best, quickest one. And of course, you know, give a little easier point because the bird and the lion drawings are a little difficult unless your name, you know, is, is something to do. L, it's a kind of challenge to draw it. My final activity, a little take on modern generation is war hieroglyphics, the emojis of that time. Interesting, isn't it? The word emoji is a Japanese word which means picture and a character. So how about understanding the world in emojis? If you're online, if you can work it out, what are the most popular emojis? What are the new emojis that have come in? A little trivia there. The emoji is a, is a company by itself and it's a world body that decides how many emojis are released in a year and what are the standardized emojis. Apple, its own way of having emoji, have three very clear lay layers where they will not have these emojis. They said we'll not have an emoji around a religious festival, around a national figure, or anything that is bullying. One of this is interesting trivia for you to know, but you can play emoji games, emoji quizzes, but this is all that we've got on the wonders of the world in Pyramid. Let me come to our next session on a subject which is so relevant to all of us. George Bernard Shaw says, there is no love more sincere than the love for food. So I, in nation building, and if you realize in nation building, I've taken the F concept. So there's food, festival, fabric, flags. You can talk about finances as well. So this is a beautiful concept that every culture, every nation has its own pride in the kind of food they serve. Well, well, when you start appreciating others food, you develop a skill called empathy, which is a skill tag. And definitely when you talk about food, my SDG goals are one and two, no poverty and zero hunger. What are we talking about food? Well, you can have all the conversations around the food. You can speak about how important food is, how essential it is, what happens with malnutrition and the other side of too much of food with obesity and why do you need foods like carbohydrate, protein. The idea is conversations that can be wonderful. You know, you can talk a lot more about what are fats, vitamin, mineral, fiber, water, the essential ingredients that you need and that is what a food is about. What is a calorie? Why don't we eat a grass like a cow or wood like termite? That's to do digestive system. Talk about gallbladder and intestine. Do a little bit of research, but this is something amazing. You can start with your conversation that how does your day start at a breakfast table? Ask everybody. Somebody may have milk and bread, cereals, juice, jam, you know, some kind of nuggets, some kind of salad, an egg, very common one, something to the cheese sandwich. Food is a very important essential ingredient in our life. One very interesting conversation you can speak about in E3, as I speak about is the top three foods in the world. Strangely, it's pasta, meat, and rice. Well, rice, I can understand. Rice has different varieties. For example, if you go to South India, the very idea of rice is in Italy, dosa, and a lot of rice-based thing. In North India, it's plain rice. Rice in China, rice in the Arab world is very bland. Rice in Mexico. So rice is very common. Meat? Well, a lot of people depend on meat, like you see the Eskimos, that's the only source of the food, which is meat. Pasta, well, it's more like a delicacy. You can add a bit of noodles into the pasta, but that is what they are. Well, you know, in United States, it was pizza, steak, and chicken. That is where the most famous and popular food, but Bangladeshis were very proud, and you should be proud, Bangladeshi, if you are one, their favorite food was vegetable. And I had a little conversation, is tomato a fruit or vegetable? You can go into divergence part. Tomato, by the way, FYI, is a vegetable. No, it's a fruit, but don't put it in a fruit salad, wherever we are. Half the world population is going hungry. What can you do? What are the conservation efforts? Food usually is not, it's not produced, it's not a problem, it's wasted. It's a distribution of food that's a problem. I love to do an exercise on two very popular apps while back here in India, but you can take any app there, is Swiggy and Zomato. And if you look at Swiggy and Zomato, though they are both food delivery apps, but the very idea of conservation of food delivery of food nature is different. Zomato is very popular. Zomato wants to be the complete food, foodie as we call it. Zomato wants to rate the restaurants, the thabas, the roadside vendors, any food, anywhere, and Zomato wants to have it. Swiggy wants to be in the business of delivering food. 
and now they want to deliver anything around it. It could be a gift, it could be a cupboard, it could be furniture. So you see the way things change. You can do a small case study on Zomato and Swiggy and look at the case studies, look at the logos, look at the colors, look at any challenges they face, the founders they had. It would be really amazing. Of course, you have got others like Fasus and, and Panda and a lot of food, Uber Eats for that matter. So we are talking about food all over the world. I've given a lot of content for you to read it, how the world lives in poverty, what happens, what are the kind of food that may produce to solve the world hunger. And trust me, I have a workshop on full, uh, you know, zero hunger. It will be interesting as a school, as an individual to listen to that, look at a Sky Education website. Hopefully you'll find some references on that or else reach us and we will let you know about the food. What kind of activities I can tell you besides the case studies that you can speak about. One of my favorite one, I spoke about that early also, was mixing recipe. You know, let's say Auntie Maria is confused. Her recipes are all mixed up. Between pasta, salad, and pudding, I've given you the ingredients. Find out, decode them, and put it in the right column, which one goes to pasta, which goes to salad, which goes to pudding. By the way, there will be some more ingredient required you can add to it, or one ingredient can be used for two different items. Absolutely acceptable. Have fun cooking. Well, my activity number two, or rather in the sequence, it will be three there, is two friends are dieting. Or rather, Sam and Fair, uh, Harry, Sam got a toothache, and he can only have a suitable food that a dentist allows. So go and help Harry and Sam, what kind of food they have for breakfast, snacks, fruits, lunch, tea time, dinner, and desserts. A lot of food choices. Make sure that you have a lot of liquid diet for the toothache guy, Sam, and a normal one for Harry. Finally, in E7, I've got a recipe for the fastest food in the world. What the recipe would you write? Come on, don't get down to Maggie alone. But remember, you know, you can make an omelette and find out how can you make an omelette. Eggs are free if you know a chicken very well. But well, eggs, what's the cost of an egg in your city? You know, even if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, it's fine to know about it. So, you know, it's like I ask you, what's the cost to go to London? I'm not going to London immediately, but it's fun to know. It's good to know. That's what we do. What can you do with a baked potato? That's a great recipe to work out. And absolutely the world's most famous recipe is the Maggie one. What can you do by making a Maggie for yourself? So now we go to my third theme of today in the green orange, in the green book of candle. And in theme F, the core theme is character building. The main theme or the sub theme is values. The skill tag is interpersonal relationship. And my SDG tag are goal five and goal 16 gender equality and peace and justice. Well, values is something I've been talking over and over again. And the purpose of this blog and the entire candle book is to teach you the way to teach a child. You can add more ideas. You can add whatever new concepts you want, but this is a framework and what are values is a great conversation. What's right and what's wrong? In today's world, sometimes your right may not be exactly my right. So, but that doesn't make it wrong. Speak about those issues. Speak about an issue which is a little sensitive, let's say fostering a child. So, you know, it's a topic, you know, I'll make it easy. You don't have to go to religious connotation. But how do I adopt a child legally? You know, in the United States, the adoption terms are very, very tough. In Australia, they are actually more relaxed. In India, it's a mixed thing. But how do you adopt? Okay, do you rename a child? What if a child is from a different culture and a faith? What happens in adoption? What are the papers you require? Is it okay to adopt a child when you have a child of your own? Or you can go to pet adoption today. A lot of people adopt a pet, say a beagle, a lovely dog or a cat. And after a few weeks, they realize they, they aren't ready for it and they throw it away. What are those values involved? You can speak a lot about it. You know, in value, I immediately jump to some activity because there's a lot of conversation and sometimes become very uh, hypothetical or preaching wise. So in F2, I ask the students to come up with what values they are. What do you admire in somebody? Give me a list of three admirable things. Oh, for me, it would be somebody should be confident speaker, a sense of humor, and a generous heart. What about you? Describe an incident where you learned a lesson the hard way, some challenge in your life, some difficulty in your life. For example, I trust a lot of people. And in that trust, people have, you know, cheated me, but I continue to trust people. Well, so many things, you know, some are given and highlighted some are things. What are three important values you think that, are, that is important to encourage in children today? Even if they are young people, they'll tell about others and you will learn a lot about them. If you lived in a perfect world, what would be different? 
maybe people will not steal maybe there will be no crime maybe people will not lie maybe a news will become saner anything a lot of conversation you can if you're together in a class make a huge chart ask them to draw their values ask them to say have fun one interesting game i do is i give them five values say punctuality draw it and mostly they will draw clock truth draw it i have seen a child draw gandhi ji and truth comes in i love that draw a value uh, like you know friendship and they might draw some hands together draw a value like love and mostly it will be heart together push yourself and find out some values it will be wonderful one more activity for a student is an is an idea called when somebody gives you a value use the acronym called think so when somebody comes and tell you a gossip a story a news think is a beautiful acronym and say is it true is it helpful is it inspiring is it necessary or is it kind so you know what you are trying to say is when somebody comes and people try to have unnecessary gossip and conversation stop them with a think activity why should i be involved in a gossip why should we involved in a in a in a conversation that will not lead or not be beneficial about it are, are you are you aware that today think is not used in the media another wonderful area i would look to work on is called fake news today the world is reeling having problems with fake news what do you think about it an example of fake news is pope the the catholic you know head of the institution endorsed donald trump as the us president of course he is no more the president as i speak to you but it's a fake news how do you identify fake news can you ask your students to make five fake news and it'll be fun or how you play truth and dare or maybe find out one right news from the five fake news that you look at finally all the values i've been speaking about what values i can give you so here are the top values that i give you why don't you make a top list of your top five values as a family what values do you have what are the two values you wish you have motivation ethics moral etiquette truth conversational conduct fairness acceptance respect standard i can have fun i can show this and i can quickly close it and i can ask them to write down the values let's see have fun what values you should not have hypocrisy oh that's a value i don't want to have very interesting conversation around the values as we go ahead well value is not over my last exercise on value is something on fairy tales we teach a lot of fairy tales to children right what values do the fairy tale teach let's say hansel and gretel snow white rapunzel cinderella goldilocks and three bears what are your favorite fairy tales and what values these bring up with you can pick up any five that i pick up or the one i've written down aladdin and the magic lamp ali baba and 40 thieves it's not ali baba the jack ma but one of my favorite value or creator there interesting conversation around it this remember is for interpersonal relationship and also for character building i hope you enjoy these as you implement them until my next audio lesson plan i hope you love the greenery behind good luck god bless and great learning the skills thank you